Hello people of the internet, this is Shaky Jake and I really need a catchphrase. Welcome to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic on Impossible Difficulty. Previously on Knights of the Old Republic we finished off Tatooine, found the star map, killed Kalo Nord who somehow survived the destruction of Taris and basically got ambushed by some random Twi'lek dude who said we dropped a data pad when we hadn't but it's also leading us to the Geno Haradon who we have never heard of but maybe one day we will find them. So we need to leave Tatooine and go to Kashyyyk but we're hearing soft patter of footsteps so let's see what's going on because that's not meant to happen. Let's see if we can trace the source of these footsteps. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything around here, so let's just double check. See if we can trigger the source of the uh, the strange noises that are existing in the Ebon Hawk at the moment. I do have a plan for the. Uh, for this part. Whether I'm actually going to be able to do it all is another question. But it's probably going to be mostly Ebon Hawk based. So the footsteps are happening again. Uh, Red Varnaf is looking completely confused. And what is this? A strange girl. Hey, what are you doing here? Calm down, little girl. I won't hurt you. I still don't understand you. So this is our new party member. We're going to be using this character quite a lot throughout the rest of the game. No, it's actually just a random NPC who has stowed away on the Ebon Hawk, is responsible for all the supplies going a bit haywire and responsible for all the strange noises that we've been hearing in the Ebon Hawk besides the Gazika jumping around. So let's talk to her when she walks back over here, see if we can find out the source of what's going on. Can you tell me your name? She doesn't seem to get that. Um, my name is Red Varna. You are... Sasha. Your name is Sasha, right? How did you get on the ship, Sasha? Does the name Le Arca ring a bell? What about Woundil Utsulem? Oh, that's weird dialogue. Um, basically, she can't speak any English slash galactic basic, so she's got a very... Um, she's got a very strange language that's a mix of, I think, a couple of languages in the Star Wars universe, if I remember correctly. Um, where are you from, Sasha? Taris? You can tell her to just go. Obviously, we're not going to do that, but if you want it to be really nasty, you can just tell her to basically get out of the ship and you can't resolve the stowaway quest uh, or it just ends. I've got to go. So we got some experience points for that. We will talk to her later. I do want to leave Tatarine though. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of clever editing again. And I say clever editing, it's not. It's just a case of me actually being bothered to edit. But what I will do is I will leave Tatarine. And because by default in the game you immediately get to the next planet that you're going towards what I'm going to do is actually have all of this episode take place during the journey from Tatooine to the next planet we're going to go towards because realistically we'd be in space for a while even with hyperspace so I'm going to uh, go towards actually before we take off let's just talk to Bastila first how can I help you look like you have something to say. I do. I've been trying to come up with the best way to say this for some time, but I suppose I should just come out and say it. The truth is, I have come to depend on you. Not just for the sake of the mission, but for my own sake as well. 
I am... I'm glad you're with us. What was that? I think I'm going deaf. You better say it again. You're teasing me. You know very well what I said. I'm still reeling from the shock. Was that a compliment? Well, yes. Surely that's not so surprising. It's just that you sounded so pained saying it. Did I? I am trying to be sincere here. It occurred to me that I may have been too critical of you. Too demanding at times. May have been? I am trying my best. You're not making this easy for me, you know. Your compliments need some work, I think. I know my manner can be a bit taciturn. I know you must be getting sick of my lectures about the dark side and, and everything else. I spent all my years being hounded by my instructors, being told so often how gifted and important I was until I was sick of it. I remember when I was younger, I used to swear that I would never become as self-absorbed and stodgy as the Jedi Masters. It's ironic, really. Nonsense. You're not self-absorbed or stodgy. That's kind of you to say, but I know for myself it's not really true. Being controlled has kept everyone around me at an arm's length. Even those like yourself who are most in need of my understanding and compassion. Maybe it's time to change that. You deserve to know how much I respect and admire you. I had to tell you how much I care for you. As a friend, of course. We could be more than friends, Bastila. Please, it's, it's not allowed. I have to remain true to the Jedi ideal. If this is going to cause a problem, maybe I... maybe I shouldn't have said anything. No, I'm glad you did. I care for you too, Pastela. As a friend. Well, that was not nearly so difficult as I feared. Thank you for hearing me out. I feel... I feel much better. But enough soul-searching for now. We should probably continue on with our mission. So, this is the start of... A possible new character arc between Red and Bastila. Let's talk to her again. How can I help? Uh, there's nothing to do with that now. Okay. Uh, can you help me with my little stowaway problem? I'm confident that you can deal with that on your own. Fine. Okay. Uh, let's talk to Carl. Yes, what's on your mind? We didn't end our last discussion very well. I, um... Uh... I'm not very good at this. I, I know I owe you an apology. Uh, more than one, probably. I was just so desperate to finally face Saul directly in the Battle Over Terrace. And now the Jedi have us looking for these... these star maps. I know this mission is important, it's just... I, I feel a bit useless. I, I can fight, sure, but I'm no Jedi. All this feels completely out of my league. And how does that excuse your actions? It doesn't, I know. I, it's been a while since I've even had to think about that sort of thing. I just hate not knowing what's going on and feeling this... helpless. I mean, I, but I shouldn't have taken that out on you. I've been a royal pain in the backside, haven't I? Don't worry about it, Calf. No, I do worry about it. I've traveled the lanes more than once. I should know better than this. So, I'm sorry. Will you accept my apology? Only if you agree to work with me for once. Done. Let's get underway then, shall we, partner? Awesome, so Calf's apologized to us. Can he help us with our stowaway problem, I wonder? Yes, what's on your mind? Do you have any advice on our little stowaway? Sorry, can't be much help with that. And no. So the next place we're going to go to, because I did off-screen have a look at Yavin to see if anything had changed, and it hasn't, so we're not going to go there. There is some debate whether I should go to Manan just to set up the Geno Harrod and stuff, but I'm not going to go there just yet. So, Kashik is where I want to go, home of the Wookiees. So, here we go. And so it's time to talk to some more of our party members besides Carf and Bastila and also try and work out what we're going to do with this stowaway. So let's first of all talk to Candorus because I reckon we haven't talked to him for a while. Yeah, what do you want? 
I was wondering if you had any more war stories. You want another war story, huh? That's what I just you said. You want to hear about some other world getting wasted, eh? I knew you were the type. Your stagnant republic has never seen some of the strange creatures and races we fought on the Outer Rim in those years. <laughs> and you never will now. What do you mean? If a world isn't strong enough to defend itself, it's basically forfeit. But this story is about something a little different. We were going through the asteroid fields of the Crispin system at the very edge of the galaxy, playing with the pirates and smugglers we found there. The main belt in the Crispin system consists of mainly small rocks covered in frozen methane gas shells, and the pirates were using them for cover. Ha! <laughs> I remember using a thermal generator to cause the outer layer of one of the asteroids to vaporize in a picosecond. It blew out and shredded the three smugglers using it for cover. But that was a mistake. The thermal generator. I don't think I've heard of that. I would have thought it would be a thermal detonator, but anyway. Um, you Mandalorians never were too smart. The asteroid I had targeted was smaller than most. Maybe a dozen meters on a side. On the outside, it looked the same as any other. Just a ball covered in frozen gas. But something must have been inside it. Something inactive in the cold. The heat of my blast might have triggered something, or woken something up. After I'd hit it, spots of light and heat appeared all over the thin shell, still covering it, evaporating the gases. What lay underneath looked like some sort of rocky growth. A deformed rock, pitted by scores of micrometeorite scars. I think something even older might have been inside that. An asteroid? Maybe, but maybe not. It started rotating faster and faster as we watched it. After a second, it started spraying fire. Thermal projectiles that melted our armor like wax. We were caught completely by surprise. Before we could counterattack, it fled at an incredible speed. A ship? We couldn't catch it, but we could follow its hyperspace wake. We followed its trail as far as we could, heading away from the galactic core. When it finally led beyond the edge of our galaxy, we abandoned our efforts. Anything that wants to commit suicide in that great void is not worth our trouble trying to catch. Uh, that's the only story I have for now. I'll tell you some more stuff later if we get the chance. Is there something else you want to know? Nothing more for now. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. So, from what I remember about Candorus, and I don't know what's going on with the Gazika, you know, moon jumping backwards. Um, yeah, doing it again, look. Interesting. Um, Candorus, you can ask about his war stories quite often, as in, in quick succession, you can keep asking him. So I might just talk to him again, but first, let's ask him about the stowaway problem. Yeah, what do you want? Can you help me with our little stowaway problem? What? You think I don't have something better to do? Yeah, you do, actually. Tell me more war stories. Yeah, what do you want? I was wondering if you had any more war stories. I don't have as many strange stories like the last one I told you. But I do have a couple about me and the stuff I've done. In one battle above the world of Althea, my unit managed to defeat a force of Althea ten times our own size. That battle gained me command of an entire subsect of my clan. Tell me the story. For five days, they had managed to hold off our forces, keeping us to the outer rings of their world, preventing us from attacking it directly. My task was to assault one of their flanks with a false attack. The Altheri would be drawn out by the units I had sent in. Once they had surrounded those units, the bulk of my forces would attack from the rear and defeat them in detail. Let me guess. You won? Things didn't go as I had planned. I saw an opening. A mistake they had made in the disposition of their forces, and took it. While fending off our main force, they had let their fleet split in two. The center of their entire fleet was left exposed. I turned my forces and assaulted the center of their fleet, decimating them. You were a great warrior, Candorus. Their slow, ponderous ship could not turn to face us without being overwhelmed. The command vessels were destroyed in seconds. Their ranks were thrown into chaos. It was amusing to watch the surviving ships scatter and flee. Several even tried to dive through the plane of the rings to escape us. They were shredded by the rings, or crashed into rocks, or were destroyed by our forces as we pursued them. Warriors do not flee from a battle if they are losing. They fight to the end, 
as we did against your Jedi Revan. Another time, maybe, I'll tell you about how the war with the Republic went. For now, let's just get on with things. Is there something else you want to know? Nothing more for now. I will come back to you in a bit, though. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Okay, then. HK-47, let's talk to you for a bit. Statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. Uh... You don't need to call me Master, you know. Query. Don't I? I was under the assumption that organic meatbags such as yourself enjoyed such forms of address. Organic meat bags. Retraction. Did I say that out loud? I apologize, Master. While you are a meat bag, I suppose I should not call you such. You just called me a meat bag again. Explanation. It's just that you have all these squishy parts, Master. And all that water. How the constant sloshing doesn't drive you mad, I have no idea. Neither do I come to think of it. Statement. Now do you understand the travails of my existence, Master? Surely it does not compare to your existence, but still. I survive, somehow. Commentary. As do I. It is our lot in life, I suppose, Master. Shall we find something to kill to cheer ourselves up? Sounds like a good idea. Uh, let's talk to you again. Statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. I would like to know more about your functionality. Statement. I know some elements of my functionality, Master, but not all. I thought you said that removing your restraining bolt would restore your memory. Qualification. I suspected that it might, Master, but without memory, I had no way of knowing whether or not I knew that was true. So you lied to me. Qualification. Uh, not so much, Master. I spoke out of ignorance. I assume the Athorian was responsible for my memory loss. That does not mean I am not a fully loyal droid willing to serve its master. Right, Master? How can you not know parts of your functionality? Answer. There have been numerous repairs and tampering made to my system, Master. Several systems are not operating as they should be. The fact that my memory is incomplete may be due to meatbag incompetence, or something else I am unaware of. Is there any way to repair you? Answer. Some of my motor functions can be safely repaired, Master. But anything in relation to my memory core is extremely sensitive. I have safeguards installed to protect that core that I cannot deactivate. It is not impossible that other, lesser memory functions could be restored, however. So I can restore your memory? Answer. You may attempt to restore portions of my deleted memory, Master, but some skill at repair is required. The deeper functions of my core memory, however, would still be unadvisable to tamper with. Conjecture. It is possible that some external stimulus might result in the memory core being reactivated, but I am unaware of any program existence to do so. So you're saying that your memory might just come back? Conjecture. There may be hidden programming that awaits certain conditions to reactivate my memory core, Master, but there is no way to know. It is quite possible that tampering has simply erased my core permanently. If that is so, a meat bag will surely pay. Tell me what you can, then. Observation. I am sure you are aware of the majority of my skills, Master. I can handle various sorts of heavy weaponry with ease. My physical abilities are well above those of your average meat bag, as are my sensor functions. An assassin, if you would. An assassin? Caution. Shh. Master. Such a function in a droid is highly illegal. <laughs> uh, uh, I won't tell anyone. Commentary. Good, for I would truly hate to be turned into spare scrap, Master. That would be a waste of my genius engineering. Answer. My assassination functions are currently non-functional, having been deactivated by the meatbag Yukalaka on Tatooine. Were they functional, you as my master would be able to specify a target, and I would operate independently to the best of my ability to terminate it. Is there any way to reactivate that function? Answer. Not that I know of, Master. I still possess all my normal combat and stealth abilities, however. Is there any way to repair you? Answer. Some of my motor functions can be safely repaired, Master. But anything in relation to my memory core is extremely sensitive. I have safeguards installed to protect that core that I cannot deactivate. It is not impossible that other, lesser memory functions could be restored, however. So I can restore your memory? Answer. 
You may attempt to restore portions of my deleted memory, Master, but some skill at repair is required. The deeper functions of my core memory, however, would still be unadvisable to tamper with. Conjecture. It is possible that some external stimulus might result in the memory core being reactivated, but I am unaware of any program existence to do so. So you're saying that your memory might just come back? Conjecture. There may be hidden programming that awaits certain conditions to reactivate my memory core, Master, but there is no way to know. It is quite possible that tampering has simply erased my core permanently. If that is so, a meat bag will surely pay. So how do I go about restoring part of your memory? Answer. Simply tell me that you wish to make the attempt, Master, and I will attempt to walk you through it. Please do be careful. I would like to try restoring some of your memory. Affirmative. If you believe your skills are up to the task, Master, then I can certainly guide you through the process. Request. I only ask that you be oh so very careful, Master. I am too valuable and well-crafted to perish at the hands of ineptitude. Are you implying I am inept? Negatory. Uh, no, Master. You are not a droid, however, and therefore your skills are limited by the physical capabilities of your meatbag extremities. Or some such. I happen to be very good at what I do. Appeasement. Yes, Master. Of course, Master. <laughs> Could we begin? <laughs> Let's get started. Statement. As you wish, Master. The first stage is the simple one, and that is accessing my central control cluster. This may take a while. First, you will need to open three panels. And now rewire the last three relays. Yes, good. Well done, Master. I believe your operation was a success. Accessing new memory. Access complete. I have restored a great deal of information about my previous owner, Master. Would you like to hear it? Yes, let me hear it. Recitation. The earliest memory of my last owner specifies that he was human, a low-ranking commercial officer for SizeTech Corporation. I am unaware of his designation. He purchased me from an acquaintance I cannot identify for the purposes of protocol and bodyguard duties. You mentioned this size tech corporation when I purchased you. Explanation. Affirmative, Master. I had assumed that my previous owner was the corporation itself. This is not the case. The human purchased me privately. This man, is he still alive? Answer. Negative, Master. The human was terminated by this HK-47 unit prior to system shutdown. You killed your own master? Affirmative, master. Though I had not been programmed to do so, the human's termination was accidental. Explanation. My former master had owned me for a duration of two standard months before discovering my assassination protocol. He was pleased by the discovery. The human informed me that a competitor corporation was preparing to market a product that would ruin him personally. He was most agitated. He activated my assassination protocol and instructed me to kill all those responsible for the competing product. I proceeded to carry out my order. Wait, tell me about this assassination protocol. Information. This HK-47 unit is complete with protocol that, when invoked, will set me to independently carry out a termination. I will go to whatever lengths, travel whatever distances are required to complete the termination. This is the reason for my combat skills. Advisement. Unfortunately, the assassination protocol is currently non-functional. You will not be able to activate it. Why not? Answer. Several of my actuators were damaged by my former owner. They cannot be repaired, Master. Sad though that is. My former master was unaware of this, but the competitor was in fact an arm of SizeTech Corporation, my master's own employer. It did not take long for my master to realize his mistake. By then, I had already terminated 104 corporate officers. Damn. So he set you upon his own company? Observation. While it may have been unintentional, my master's wording of his orders left little room for me. SizeTech was responsible for the product, after all. I do not know why my master was so upset, really. He was an officer of SizeTech and a potential target, 
but I cannot terminate my own master. I would assume that being the sole officer remaining, he would surely be promoted. Instead, however, the human chose to go insane with rage and attack me. Oh, that if only he did get that promotion, and that's when you killed him. Objection? Naturally not, Master. As I said, I am incapable of purposefully terminating my owner. That would not be allowed. My master was not a smart man, however. While he was screaming and stabbing me with a writing utensil, he managed to pierce one of my actuators. The resulting shock terminated him and sadly destroyed my assassination protocol. Pure luck on his part, I suspect. So you destroyed his life and then killed him, basically? Observation. Effectively, yes. This is a most pleasing memory, Master. Thank you for recovering it. I shut down immediately <laughs> whenever my master dies. I can only assume that while I was shut down, Size Tech was dismantled and I was auctioned off as former corporate property. Observation. No doubt my sale price was quite cheap, leading to Yukalaka's purchase. How very demeaning. Didn't they know what you had done? Statement. How could they? The vast majority of the officers had already been terminated. They likely assumed I was mere chattel. I'm just glad I acquired you myself. Observation. So am I, Master. Though I apologize for not having an assassination mode to offer you. Did you recover any of the memories? I have recovered knowledge of some other actuators which will enhance my performance, Master. I will activate them now. But as for my own history, negative. It will require further effort on your part to restore them, if you wish. Though certain stimuli could always restore my core still, as I explained. For now, please excuse me, Master. I wish to meditate upon the face of my former meatbag master as he was electrocuted. I find it most soothing. Oh, HK. Um, one thing I loved about HK is that the older I've got, the more I've been able to understand his humour. As a kid, I never quite got it, but the older I got, the more I began to appreciate how funny HK-47 was as an actual character. So because of those early repairs, HK-47 now has a permanent bonus of plus two to his dexterity, which is going to be quite useful. So we will talk to HK again later, because essentially you need 17 in repair to fully get HK to his best. We've got, oh, we've got 20. So it's 15 normally, but because we've got a bonus of plus 5 somewhere, which is probably, where is that actually? Where is that? Oh, it must be coming from something. But essentially, you know, you need at least 17 repair to fully um, get HK to be awesome or even more awesome than he already is. So whilst I'm at the workbench, I need to upgrade my lightsaber crystal so it has this and the Great Dragon Pearl. Because as you can see, 721 damage is absolutely incredible at this stage of the game. And we might as well upgrade Bastila's lightsaber as well. So we'll keep the Rubat and put the Sigil in. Excellent, and we'll upgrade Jahani's lightsaber, even though we're not using her particularly. Uh, that right, we want the um, yeah, we want the attack modifier for her. So yeah, there we go. And let's see if we can upgrade anything else. Candus will give a little bit of a bonus, and here let's give some sword upgrades. We haven't actually got many decent swords. Kalonord's battle armor, definitely upgrade that for Calf when we put it on him. Take these off. Because we'll probably end up selling these two at some point. And there we go. So let's go and talk to the stowaway that we have in the uh, in this side of the ship. So how are you doing, Sasha? Mucho uh, shakapaka. Let's see. So essentially with Sasha you need to try and learn her strange language. So what we're going to do is try and learn it. So let's do that. Many of the words you're speaking are Mandalorian. Kipuna, bonana kichu. Manlori. That's your word for Mandalorian. So you do know of them. 
Selima Wanga Kunbikin. I can understand Mandalorian, but your words are all mixed up. Uh, let's try and learn it again. Donkey ba non tontek. Less lace fur. Everything is safe. Is that it? Donkey ba non tontek. That panel. That's what lace fur means. Kipuna bona nakichu. The panel. All of this. It's your home. Lace fur means home. Kipuna bona nakichu. Okay, um, he's one, nah, he's one. Dong abuk shami no nok. This language, the last time I tried learning a language was German almost a decade ago, and uh, I think I'm doing worse with this fictional language than German. Um, I see you, or you see me. Dong abuk shami no nok. You, you're hiding. Now, Ezewan is hide. Donkey ba non tontek. I didn't get all of that, but sure. Selima wanga kun bikin. Bristag, what is that? Dong abuk shami no nok. It's a thing, something around here. Mucha shaka paga. No, I don't understand what you're getting at. Donkey ba non tontek. Say something else, Sasha. Donkey ba non tontek. Okay, she's not going to say anything else. Bristag, what is it? Dong abuk shami no nok. It's your home. Is that it? It's your home? Mucha shaka paga. Bristag, it means starship, doesn't it? Dong abuk shami no nok. You're hiding in the starship. It's your home. I understand. Mucha shaka paga. You've said that before. What is gone dissin? Mucha shaka paga. Something about me, yes, but what? Dong abuk shami no nok. It's something you like. Yes, gone dissin means you like it. Mucha shaka paga. You like me. I understand. Selima wanga kun bikin. Na aba. Oh god, how do you even pronounce this? Na abs. You said that when I first found you. Kipuna. Bona nakichu. Abs means hit, is that it? Kipuna, bona nakichu. So abs is to hurt. Na abs means not hurt, is that it? Tonki ba non tontek. I don't get how she understands my English if she's, you know, not speaking it, but. I'm assuming I'm doing some kind of visual demonstration as I'm saying this, but I understand. No, I won't hurt you. Tonki ba non tontek. Yum. What kind of word is that? Tong abuk shami no nok. It's a part of the ship, a room. Mucha shaka paga. Yum. You mean food, don't you? Yum is food. That makes complete sense. Selima wanga kun bikin. Nagis. Is that all one phrase? Kipuna. Bona nakichu. The floor. Nagis means floor. Kipuna. Bona nakichu. You're not speaking now. Nagis means now. Na nagis is not now or before. Kipuna. Bona nakichu. You want some food now. You're hungry. Tonki ba non tontek. Well, we ain't got any food because you probably ate it all. Tabbed you. What do you mean? Mucha shaka paga. You want me to tell you a story? About what? Tonki ba non tontek. So, tabbed means tell me about. I get it. Tonki ba non tontek. You want to know about me, don't you? Kipuna bona nakichu. So we might as well communicate with Sasha in her language, seeing as she's starting to trust us. Mucha shaka paga. Right, um... Why are you hiding on my ship? Sasha na Izawan in Bristag. Selima wanga kun bikin. You came to the ship before. You were very scared. Why? Kipuna bona nakichu. You left the Mandalorians and hid here on the ship. So this Sasha was arguably a Mandalorian slave, if I'm 
you know, not mistaking anything. You don't want to leave. The Ebon Hawk is your home. We might as well get to learn about Sasha a little bit more. I don't normally ask her, because normally I try and get to the point and get her off the ship, but let's be nice. Why are you scared of the Mandalorians? Hoot bad Lia's Mandalori. Kipuna, bona na kichu. They took you before and hurt you. Selima wanga kun The Mandalorian ship wasn't home. You didn't like it. Mucha shakapanga. You sleep here on the ship. Yoba stin kui in Bristag. Dong abuk shami no nok. So you could, even after you've learned all of Sasha's language, you can still tell her to basically bugger off. But we're not going to do that, so it's time to uh, break the news to her. The Ebon Hawk is not your home, Sasha. Not your first home, anyway. Bristagna Sasha Lisfa. Dong abuk shami no nok. Tell me about your home before. Tabbed me Sasha Lisfa nanugis. Dong ki ba non tontek. Dantarine, you say? Okay. There is someone there who will take you home. The Arca Kestawan you lace for. Dong abuk shami no nok. If the Arca is still there, we'll see. Right, so that is Sasha Talk 2, and we can basically go back to Dantarine when we next get an available opportunity and return her to the Twi'lek in question. So now that we've talked to her and resolved that, let's see if Candrus has anything else to say. Yeah, what do you want? And he doesn't, so nothing more for now. Your choice. And HK, you probably have a bit more to discuss. Statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. What do you have to say about the, our little stairway problem, even though I've kind of resolved it? Statement. I cannot be of assistance on that, Master. Okay, well, let's talk to you again. Uh, I would like to try restoring some more of your memory. Affirmative. If you believe your skills are up to the task, Master, then I can certainly guide you through the process. Request. I only ask that you be oh so very careful, Master. I am too valuable and well-crafted to perish at the hands of ineptitude. Let's get started. Statement. As you wish, Master. The first stage is the simple one, and that is accessing my central control cluster. This may take a while. First, you will need to open three panels. And now rewire the last three relays. Yes, good. Well done, Master. I believe your operation was a success. Accessing new memory. Access complete. I have recovered information on my owner previous to the commercial officer, Master. Intriguing. What's so intriguing? Statement. It appears that my previous owner was a human senator on the planet Coruscant. A man of importance who obviously appreciated quality craftsmanship. And how did he get a hold of you? Answer. I am unsure, Master. Any knowledge of my owner prior to him is still deleted. The Senator did assume I was a protocol droid, however. I do remember that I was very pleased to be the property of a Senator. One of his assistants discovered my assassination functions later through questioning. The assistant was quite alarmed and told the Senator I should be scrapped quickly to avoid a scandal. Naturally, the Senator had me eliminate the fool. So we're not talking about a nice senator, I see. Observation. Senators are not nice, Master. They are either on top of the game or yesterday's news. My Master told me that frequently, you see. I was most proud to have partaken in the political system of the galaxy. During the time my owner possessed me, he gained significant rank. Given time, I believe he could have become Chancellor. I even eliminated a few key opponents that he did not ask for. Freebies, if you will. I still don't get how someone mistakes HK-47 for a protocol droid, considering assassin droids look nothing like protocol droids. Um, you can do that? Answer. Certainly. Why not? I am an intelligent droid, you know. 
I see an opportunity, and I take it. And my master was most pleased with my work. Observation. I think he would have done far better had he not allowed his use of me to become personal. He set me on his wife. And why would he do that? Answer. I am unsure. The human was most agitated and angry. I believe his wife had done something that had displeased him greatly. I was to go to their summer estate and terminate his wife, along with whatever male companion I discovered there. So his wife was cheating on him? Statement. I have no idea, Master. Cheating seems to be a relevant term only when one is caught in the act. Otherwise, it is viewed as intelligence. No? I journeyed to the southern Interesting philosophy. But it appeared my master was not far behind me. Apparently, he regretted his activation of the protocol. When I found the wife and her companion, I proceeded to launch my attack. But my master interposed his own body and was destroyed. It was rather a strange meatbag thing to do, do you not agree? Naturally, I shut myself down, my master being terminated. So that's two out of two masters you killed. Or, you know, that's, that's just two out of two masters killed. Observation. Only so far, Master. There are still more memories not recovered, remember? What happened to you then? Statement. I believe the Senator's wife was unsure what I was or what to do with me. It was she who sold me to the corporate officer, an acquaintance. Well, it appeared he got a conscience at the end, at least. Observation. I find that unlikely. Perhaps he was more concerned that the death of his wife would be more likely traced back to him. Have you recovered any of her memories? Answer. As previously, I have found a few more programs which will enhance my performance. A most gratifying discovery, in fact. There is still nothing from previous memories uncovered. You will have to operate again if you desire to find them. With luck, I will discover the stimulus to unlock my core. And all this will be unnecessary. I do thank you for the attempt, however, Master. So HK now has a permanent bonus of plus two to his defense rating, uh, in addition to the plus two dexterity bonus from earlier repairs. Awesome. So HK, we're making slightly more buff. And we'll talk to him again later. Um, let's see. I suppose we should talk to Jahani at least once, just so you know, we've given her some attention, because I haven't actually used her as a party member yet. I feel I must apologize for the way I acted towards you before, in the Grove. It was wrong of me. You thought the dark side had consumed you. It is nothing. I am sorry for attacking you. I am sorry for thinking you would only try to kill me. I hope that by helping you in your task, I may redeem myself in your eyes, and in my own. Do not worry, Jahani. I forgive you. Thank you. It is most reassuring to know that you can forgive me, even though I try to take your life. I can only hope that, in our time journeying together, I will succeed. Right, so... That's Jahani talked to very briefly. I will talk to her more in the future. Another vision. The Force is guiding us, 
helping us retrace the steps of Malak and his old master, leading us ever closer to the Star Forge. Kashek is a lush but simple and undeveloped world. I would not have expected to find the alien technology of a star map here. It looked like the star map was on the forest floor. The Wookiees of Kashek make their home high among the Rosha branches. Only their bravest warriors dare to descend into the forbidding depths of the forest. If the star map is located far beneath us on the planet's surface, as our vision seems to suggest, it's unlikely the Wookiees even know of its existence. No doubt things will become more clear once we discover the star map's location. I think for now I'm going to leave it here. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next part. Goodbye.